Hey guys, Turk here and welcome back to the channel. Today we're going to be doing our second episode in our Console Wars Debunked series. Last week I introduced you to how I look at gaming performance when it comes to this generation of consoles and I originally for this week was going to make a better Xbox Series S. However, with the announcement of Hellblade 2 only being locked to 30 FPS for the Xbox, oh man, you guys know my Twitter was on fire. I posted a meme where I had the kombucha girl looking at various different games, of course hating on Starfield and Hellblade 2's 30 FPS performance, with actually looking pretty pleased as to how Dragon's Dogma 2 performs, as well as Final Fantasy 7's 30 FPS mode. With over 73,000 views and oh my goodness, about 300 likes and 200 comments, this tweet alone took about two days of my life away from me. So rather than console war over on Twitter, let's take a step back and break down the argument. When it comes to gaming, there are two sides of opposition. In one corner, we have Team 30 FPS. Where this frame rate falls short, it delivers in clarity. By reducing how often a frame presents to the screen, the system can spend about 33 milliseconds to add more effects or generate a larger frame. For our purposes today, that comes in the flavor of 4K. The PlayStation 5 and Xbox Series X aim for this output resolution, but very few games run this native render resolution. However, given their lack of horsepower, hitting higher frame rates is just not feasible in this mode. Now, in the other corner is Team 60 FPS. Fluid action is preferred over image clarity and is considered the standard for modern games this generation. With only about 16 milliseconds to render a frame, the gaming system has half the time to deliver an image. Reduced resolutions and image quality enable the system to meet the demanding schedule. Again, for the PlayStation 5 and Series X, there's only so much horsepower for the entire system. So to achieve 60 FPS, it's quite a challenge. Now we face a dilemma. Do we want higher resolutions or a higher frame rate? Ideologically, it's easy to pick one over the other, but as always, there's got to be some nuance. Sometimes a game won't necessarily improve with the extra frame rate. Take for example, Baldur's Gate 3. Since it's a turn-based affair most of the time, any additional fluidity is a waste of resource. On the other hand, the added resolution doesn't improve over image quality sometimes. As you'll see in the following clips, in the heat of action in modern warfare, the additional sharpness of the image just doesn't manifest when you're flicking your mouse in the heat of a gunfight. This, my friends, presents the illusion of choice. Since some people on Twitter can't understand concepts, here's a bit of an analogy. Would you rather be punched in the gut or slapped in the face? Both options will hurt you in the short term, and overall, neither is a good choice. But that choice is presented as a false security, and you'll only feel better because you feel like you're in control. Developers choosing a single presentation and removing that choice remove that sense of security, thus the outrage that I highlighted in the original meme. Is it a false outrage? Should devs be required to provide options? In this video, I'm not putting the games to the test, I'm putting you guys to the test. Now theory is all well and good, but I want to show you guys what all of this looks like. I'm going to be running through 10 different games and putting 4K 30fps side by side versus 1080p at 60fps. With the variety of games, it'll help showcase each corner's argument and prove the nuance that's required in the discussion. The first thing to remember in these videos is that I never zoom them in. Digital Foundry and other outlets do this to help showcase an issue or an observation, and that's well and good. Still, it is always taken out of context by the gaming community. Gamers don't zoom in and stare at a fence, individual foliage, or any of that other nonsense, so I won't be emphasizing it more than I need to. Also, I'm not going to be pausing or looking at screenshots. Just like zooming in, these screenshots are used by the likes of Red Dragon and Dreamwalker and other fanboys to take instances out of context as ammo for the console wars. I don't game with screenshots, so I'm not going to be showing that to you. In these 10 games, I'll get as close as possible to a like-for-like -like gameplay scenario and present those at speed with no editing tomfoolery. Now, for transparency, I do prefer the 60fps experience in all instances, 
but my bias does take into account instances where some games just can't run at full speed. But we'll get to that later. Post down in the comments what side are you on? Are you team 30 FPS or 60? We'll be circling back to that in just a bit. Now, let's get some obvious games out of the way first. Games that require instant player input, present enormous amounts of screen effects, or require real-time tracking, they demand fast gameplay. With that, presenting a gamer with a 30 FPS option, it really is irrelevant. First up, Diablo 4. I'm eagerly awaiting for those Season 4 updates and the loot improvements, and I'll definitely be playing it at 60 FPS. Even with the increased resolution, each character only takes up roughly one-tenth of the screen. At 1080p, that's roughly 100 pixels, and at 4K, that's only 216. Even though the details of my warrior's pauldrons are more refined, it's nowhere near recognizable in this Legion battle. However, the significant disadvantage is the speed. At 30 FPS, it's very challenging to discern the movements of individual characters on the screen and then react appropriately. I was constantly missing my upheavals and heavily relied on charges just to hit the whole screen at once. But with 60 FPS, I could see the slightly blurred enemies and track where my allies were going. So clearly, an option for 30 FPS in Diablo 4, it's just a useless mode. If you thought 30 FPS in Diablo was bad, now let's take a look at Call of Duty. If you're watching this footage and you think, man, this looks pretty good, I kindly request you turn in your gamer card immediately. <laughs> Input lag, chaotic character movements, and a lack of aim assist make tracking and landing shots on the opponent practically impossible. But turning on 60 FPS mode is a night and day difference, and all the complaints from before are wiped away. Sure, the fencing could be more detailed, the metal doesn't exactly have texture, and the edges could be a little bit more crisp, but I prefer being able to actually land my shots. Again, a 30 FPS option just makes no sense here. Forza Horizon 5 is our first game that presents a false illusion of choice. Though the user input is less taxing and vehicles don't instantly jump across the screen, the movement of the entire experience requires fluid motion. The only object that is consistent here is your car. And without pausing the screen or zooming in, it sure does look good enough. I'd even go on to argue the use of motion blur on the 4K screen, it actually detracts from the clarity throughout the scene. So I give the nod to 60 FPS. Now let's blur the edges a bit with some slower paced action games. God of War is one of PlayStation's most popular franchises, but its original release only featured a 30 FPS mode. With the PlayStation 4, they introduced both a resolution mode at 30 FPS and a performance mode hovering below 60. But in these clips, we have a perfect rendition of both modes. At 30 FPS on the left, I can clearly see the definition of Kratos' muscles, armbands, and shoulders, and the details of the landscape look natural. But with 60 FPS and the upscaling, the gameplay is more fluid, but much of the detail put into the game is stripped away. Sure, FSR does a great job recreating the image, but many of the details, they just look over sharp or unnatural. Given the slower paced action and more detail oriented visual presentation, I do see the argument for having the steady 30 FPS mode over the smoother yet distorted 60 FPS option. The Last of Us follows suit, but cranks it up to another level. After escaping town, the vast amount of foliage in the forest is impressive. Overall, FSR 3 does a fantastic job of upscaling from 1080p up to 4K. But just as with God of War, objects like Joel's hair, his axe, and some of the foliage elements and the water, they're either over sharp or have noticeable artifacts. Between the two modes, the increased fluidity of the animations don't necessarily outweigh the motion of the scene. This Red Dead Redemption 2 clip is a parallel move in the graphics department but focusing on a more urban-esque presentation than The Last of Us. Introducing a horse getaway sequence and a gunfight, we still maintain a visual masterpiece while requiring a bit more fluidity to feel natural. The 60 FPS option feels much better as we ride through town, but I can clearly see the lost detail in Arthur's jacket and his hat and all the characters that are in the midground. However, the tempo of the action and the slight amount of degradation 
do make it kind of a toss up for me whether either option is better. So giving the user an option here would be good for gamers. <laughs> Ironically though, Rockstar fails to unlock this option on the console, yet essentially gets a pass from the gaming community at large. Cyberpunk flips the script in favor of the 60 FPS option. As we travel through Night City, we see many of the same arguments from Forza Manifest. The car looks incredibly crisp and the scenery is comparable thanks to the motion blur, but FSR2 is correctly tuned here on this busy street, making the 60 FPS option a clear winner. Even then, with many of today's games, Cyberpunk's dynamic resolution scaling will kick in and only make the game look even better. This 60 FPS footage is actually a worst case representation of the base game. The 30 FPS option, it's a bit redundant here, given that the game looks incredible without the increased resolution. Now let's start to ruffle some feathers. Let's talk Starfield, Hellblade, and Final Fantasy VII, but the integrated version. Each of these games has its own issues, yet it is either lambasted or praised for its implementation of player choice. Starfield is offered on the Xbox Series X with a dynamic resolution between 4K and 1440p running at 30fps. Just as we saw in other games in this list, that's a similar threshold for most quality modes, yet the absence of a performance mode is a massive disappointment for the console players. My standard benchmark loop runs us through the mass district in Jemison, where we encounter futuristic architecture while running across the gardens on the way to Constellation HQ. In my testing in this exact spot, the game is bottlenecked and it drops to the 1440p threshold. So surprisingly, both clips here look incredibly close to one another. That begs the question now, why isn't there a 60 FPS option? Well, that's because the game can't consistently hit 60 FPS. In fact, this system is CPU bottlenecked in this exact spot, meaning the GPU needs to be more utilized and it can't keep up with the 16 millisecond frame time. So instead of delivering an inconsistent performance mode, Bethesda decided to lock the game to a rock solid 30 FPS, and rightly so. Even when in huge firefights, the game is responsive enough when it counts, yet delivers the visual quality its developers intended. So for Starfield, your options would be a locked 30 FPS running near native 4K or an inconsistent 45 FPS at 1440p. Given the flack that Twitter likes to drop on inconsistent experiences, I don't blame the developers for siding with consistency. However, now that FSR 3 is out and frame generation is a thing, Starfield should build that in and get the best of both worlds with a 40 FPS option. Now, our upcoming cinematic short story, Hellblade 2. It was recently announced that Hellblade 2 will have a locked 30 FPS and dynamic resolution to achieve a cinematic experience. Again, fanboys have been screaming on both sides of the warfront without acknowledging the developer's intent. Hellblade is designed with an extreme emphasis on artistic direction and immersion, where the character is constantly battling with their inner dialogue and mental condition. As such, the gameplay isn't meant for action, but to convey the story. At 30 FPS, the image is crisp and the developer's intent will be accurately displayed to the screen. If they enable a 60 FPS mode, resolution is going to take a hit, and if it pans out like the original game, Blur will engulf the entire screen. Character models, environment details, and some of those atmospherics are all impacted by the additional blur. Compared to other games in this video, there is a clear advantage for both gameplay and visual quality that favors the 30 FPS mode, and moving to 60 FPS would be detrimental to the overall experience. <sighs> Last but not least is Final Fantasy VII. Moving all the way back to the tweet and its responses, Let's look at 4K 30 versus 1080p 60. Escaping the reactor through Sector 8, it's evident that 4K has a drastic improvement in clarity, more so than other games today. The environment is sharper and the depth of field effect is more accurate. At 60 FPS, motion blur is exaggerated, while Cloud's hair and more importantly his sword are noticeably blurry. As the sun rises in the Sector 7 slums, these observations are even more apparent. 
Yes, the increased fluidity of the motion is a noticeable improvement, but the terrain, the trash, the clutter, and environment are even blurrier than the previous example. Overall, at 60 FPS, the image is significantly softer than the 4K presentation. So, to rebuff my detractors, this evidence proves many prefer the 30 FPS option over 60. The fact that there is an option doesn't negate my tweet. It is only a red herring regarding the topic. But for today's video, I'd even argue that the 60 FPS mode detracts from the overall experience, at least when dynamic resolution scaling degrades quality to this degree. Throughout this video, I've shown you guys several examples of native gameplay with no alterations. There are some games where 60 FPS is a clear advantage, such as Modern Warfare, Diablo 4, Forza Horizon 5, and Cyberpunk. However, there are others where 30 FPS coincides with the developer's intent, like Hellblade, Starfield, God of War, and Red Dead Redemption 2. That leaves us with Final Fantasy VII and The Last of Us, and after looking at the footage, 30 FPS, it's at least a valid point to consider. So let's be fair and have a level playing field. Let's remove Starfield and Hellblade from the discussion. In the remaining eight games with different mode options, maybe four have a case to provide those options to the player. And in my opinion, there should only really be two. The illusion of choice can only go so far, at least in the context of a console experience. So let's take this argument to the ultimate conclusion and let's debunk some console warring talking points. If 4K 30 FPS mode is okay, you can't have selective outrage on which games those are. Dynamic resolution or not, as long as a game can maintain a solid 30 FPS, that should be okay. Now, if you're in the all games should hit 60 FPS camp, you have to accept all the concessions that come with it. When it comes to the CPU, expect games to have less AI, less dynamic worlds, and fewer cascading events that will impact the gameplay. That would drastically impact how Baldur's Gate 3, Dragon's Dogma 2, Starfield, and many more CPU bottleneck games actually present themselves to the character. Could you imagine Baldur's Gate with one third or a quarter of the amount of NPCs in the city? That wouldn't be the same game. Going the next step to the GPU, you can't knock on a game for dropping down to 1080p. Dynamic resolution scaling has come a long video. I probably should make a video about it. And as we've seen today, Fidelity FX Super Resolution, it does a decent enough job of picking up the slack. But if we go a step further, you have to be willing for games and platforms to drop to even 720p or below. That includes games like Immortals of Avium, Robocop, Redfall, and many of these other Unreal Engine 5 games that just dip really low. Even if we ignore the resolution drops, we should expect other graphical settings, such as shadows, ambient occlusion, and other next-gen effects to be reduced. However, though, I hope this video has highlighted a need for more nuance in the discourse. For me, I prefer a 60 FPS experience, but I can acknowledge when a developer decides to enable one mode over another. That nuance is necessary, and judging a game with that nuance is mandatory. Case in point, the meme in question. If 30 FPS is okay, then Starfield, Dragon's Dogma 2, Hellblade 2, and Final Fantasy 7's 30 FPS mode, they're all in the clear and they should be judged by their merits alone. But if 60 FPS is required, then all four games deserve equal amounts of outrage. And even in those modes, they deserve equal amounts of scrutiny to the quality that they provide. Consistency is the name of the game. And that's another console war debunked. I'll see you guys next week.